I need to, you need to clean the extensions or something? Mm -hmm. She might, Nancy. She might. That would be a good idea, Great just question. in the event. Thank you. Just get a reason yeah. from next to see. Just in case you need it. She's, well, she's great. Yeah, she's going to bring you. Yeah, she's going to bring you. Yeah, but she's going to bring you. So anyway, when she gets it, can I see it? That might be a good idea. Can I see it? Well, I had a real sweet Wednesday about it. Later. Oh, Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. I'll call you later today. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Sharing 
him with uh, the Alabama Florida Conference. He'll be he'll also be the Bishop of Alabama Florida and uh, also the Bishop of Western North Carolina. So uh, our our former Bishop Bishop Leland is is retiring and. Uh, so Ken is going to be our new bishop. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to pour out your spirit upon us. Grant us wholeness. Grant us health. Grant us confidence, gracious Heavenly Father, that, that this plague will soon pass us. And we ask you, gracious Heavenly Father, to keep us healthy and keep us well. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn is We've a Story to Tell to the Nations. And um, if you attended Sunday school or vacation Bible school in the United States, any time during the 20th century, you are likely familiar with We've a Story to Tell to the Nations. This gospel hymn was written in 1806 by Henry Ernest Nichols, 1862 to 1926, a British civil engineer st engineering student turned musician. Nickel fre frequently signed his text with pseudonyms, an anagram of his middle name and last name, Colin Stern, according to hymnary.org. Hymnary uh, Nickel Stern wrote around 130 hymns, almost all for children. Most were included only in Sunday school songbooks rather than larger hymnals. Even so, a few made it into more than two publications. We were story to tell the nations, on the other hand, which was first published in 1896 in London, and the Sunday School Hymnary has been included in at least three, 200, 250 songbooks and hymnals. According to William J. Reynolds, a Southern Baptist musician and scholar to the Companion to the Baptist Hymnal, 1976, this text, first printing in the United States, was probably in Turner's Hymns and Tunes for School, published in 1908. Let us stand and sing with a story to tell to the nations.
this great confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the point of Father, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come the judge, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please come forward. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit on this time of giving, this time of receiving. Let our hearts rejoice in you as we return a portion of what you have blessed us. All for the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Come now to our prayer time. Are there those that God has laid upon your hearts this morning? Uh, Jackie is, is sick today, so we need to lift her up in prayer. The will for
got some good news this morning that uh, PJ Byers is, is doing a little better. We need to continue to remember him in prayer. And I think Amy is doing better. Anyone else? Landis is home. Landis is home. Well, what joys has God has God granted you this week? Last Sunday, I realized. Well, I've always known this is a joy. But he made it, he, he really brought some joy last Sunday. He had a, he had two different shoes that said, shut up, Captain. <laughs> so that was, yeah. bless his heart, he brought life for the, all the family Sunday and some people at church. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't get to laugh as hard as we did. But he got it right this Sunday, didn't he? <laughs> he came in over and he said, my shoes match. <laughs> 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 God bless his heart. I don't know what I'd do without him. <laughs> I had some rain. I told that. And I uh, um, had forgotten to lift Penny up. She had uh, uh, some procedure to remove some skin cancers this week. But she's doing fine. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we have much to be thankful for. And we're just thankful that, that you consider us your children, that you surround us with your love and your care, that you look after us, gracious Heavenly Father. And we're thankful for, for those that we've been praying for for some time that are doing better. And we're thankful for Amy Newton and for P.J. Byers and uh, for Landis Jenkins, gracious Heavenly Father. And we want to remember the Wilkerson family. We want to remember uh, those folks that are going to Honduras on a mission trip, and we ask you to keep them safe, Bobby and, and the gang. And, uh, I want you to remember my wife, Jackie, gracious Heavenly Father. And she's gotten some air in her line, and she's having some pain in, in, her, 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 in her stomach and all, gracious Heavenly Father, but be with her. And, and, Give her relief from this pain and this upset. And so, gracious God, just hold all of these folks who are on a prayer list close to you. Grant them your peace and your grace and your mercy. Surround them with your love and your care. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. And we ask you to bless us as we serve you each day. And we want to lift this prayer up that your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
experience today. Not even babies. I'm going to be talking today about running from God. And I don't know if y'all have any experience with that. You'll hear, you'll hear later in my, my sermon about some experience that I've had with that. And I'm going to be reading from Jonah. Reading the first chapter, verses 1 through 17. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. chapter of Jonah, beginning with verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. To break up. When the mariners were, were afraid and each cried to his God, they threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down to the hold of the ship and lay down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, what are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare, uh, its, will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, come, let us cast lots so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots and lot fell on Jonah. And then they said to him, tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, and made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them so. And they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, and the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not. For the sea grew more and more stormy against them. And they cried out to the Lord, Please, O oh Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood. For you, O oh Lord, have done as it pleases you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Why would you want to run from God? Think about it. It really does not make any sense. But for Jonah, it made perfect sense. God was asking him to do something he was totally against. And everything he was raised to believe. He was raised to distrust and even hate people who did not believe in the Lord God. Why would God ask him to do something so distasteful? 
Nineveh was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrians were known for their cruelty to their enemies they captured in battle. They would tear out tongues, blind, and behead their captives. One historian noticed that it would be like sending a Jewish representative to the Nazis in Germany, asking them to repent. Assyria was at its lowest ebb in military and political power. A civil war was raging in the country. The people knew that they were in trouble. Jonah was written between 784 and 772 BC. God had a plan and had already set the stage for Jonah. All he had to do was go to Nineveh and proclaim that if they did not repent from their evil ways, the Lord God would destroy them. Jonah, instead of doing as God asked, ran as far and as fast from God as he could. Foolish Jonah, you can't outrun God. And I speak from experience. I ran for God, ran from God for three years, just as long as Jesus' ministry was here on earth. I thought I'd outrun God till one day I was at a client's house, and we were talking when the client turned to me and said, I think you need to go talk to your pastor about going into ministry. I was shocked. What did, what did he see in me that led him to that conclusion? I have to admit, I was convicted that day and told him that God had called me three years prior. I went and talked to my minister. I was recommended by the church. I applied to go to Duke and went before the Board of Ordained Ministry for approval. And here I am today. I had seen the toll it had taken on my pastor. I said to myself that I would never be a pastor. You should never say never. Because God has a sense of humor. I knew what John was going through. I did not get on a boat and attempt to leave the country like Jonah did. God goes to great lengths to get people to listen to him even to the point of sending a fish to swallow a person whole and regurgitate them back up on the dry land. What a sight John must have been. He was bleached white by the gastric juices, probably a little seasick, covered by what the fish had been eating. Did I mention God has a sense of humor? You can only run from God so far. Jonah may have been the only person able to convince the Ninevite people that they were sinning against God. When a person runs from God, it's set in motion events unique to them. For Jonah, it was a storm of the sea, the fear of catastrophe, and imminent death. Jonah's confession, ultimately the casting of Jonah overboard, which led to his being swallowed by a great fish. Did I mention God has a sense of humor? What does this story have to do with us today? We cannot avoid what God wants us to do. We have to tell others the good news of Jesus. We have to make God relevant in our lives in order that God may be relevant in our neighbor's lives. We cannot exhibit an attitude of timidity but be bold in sharing our beliefs. That is the only way people will know about Jesus and to know that we are serious about Jesus. We need to show them that we first care about them before they will care about what we have to say about God and about Christ. Wesley termed it as love of God and love of neighbor. That is what we must exhibit. Otherwise, we're merely hypocrites, only going through the motions of Christianity. We do this by collecting food and clothing for the poor, looking for suitable employers for someone needing a job, inviting a stranger for a meal, making a new friend, showing the love of Christ. Actions speak louder than words. We've had a difficult year 
wearing masks and social distancing. We are not done yet with a Delta variant. I fear we are in for another round. We just have to remember that God is good all the time and he will not leave us orphaned. We live in a country where our individual rights and freedoms are respected and protected. We have the right to assemble and peacefully protest injustice. We have the right of free speech. Yes, we live in the greatest country in the world. And we serve a great God. It is a wonder that we were born into this nation, and that we live in this nation the freedoms given to us that were bought and paid for in blood and sacrifice, and that we still have men overseas fighting a war that will soon be coming home. My fear is that the, the forces that are at work overseas will again take over those nations once we leave. But God is good. God is good all the time. God has a plan. Just like he had a, had a plan for Jonah. He has a plan for our lives. If we would just but humble ourselves and pray and ask God to reveal that plan to us, he will give us that opportunity. He will grant us that courage that we need. If, we, if we're a little fearful, that's okay. We don't know what to expect. But we need to be bold because God is bold and our God wants the best for us. He wants us to be fearless in speaking to people. But we can't just, just go out and, and pass out a tract and, and talk to a stranger. We have to let them know that we care for them. I was talking to a lady this week at the mission center and uh, told her that I was interested in going to uh, do some mentoring in, in the schools. And, and she said, well, the, the, there's great need for that. And I told her I was just hoping that schools would stay in session and that we would have face-to-face -face learning. But I'm gonna go talk to the principal at Chase Middle School and see if I can't volunteer. See what I have to do to, I know I have to, had to do a background check and all that stuff. I'm not worried about that. I think I passed the background check. I don't think I have anything in my past that would limit me from that. We just all need to find something to do that will be serving God. Whether it's teaching a Bible, a Bible study on Wednesday night, whether it's cooking a meal, whether it's sitting and, and talking to a somebody we don't know and making a new friend. I was telling Jackie the other day that I made a new friend at, uh, at Tractor Supply. His name's Doug. And I'm gonna I go to his house one day, but he raises chickens and he raises bees. And so we, we got some things to talk about. So, but he was just a joy to get to know. And all we have to do is take a few minutes, a few moments of our time to get to know somebody and to find out that we do have some things in common. Be good to one another. Be good to God because God is good to us. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is very appropriate for today. Just as I am, let us stand and sing.
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father Almighty, with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, abiding with you always. Amen. <laughs>